this is just a really cool opportunity. Like, who wouldn't want to work with McLaren? I mean, that's why we're here. Oh, when you hear that, What's up guys? My name is Indiana Masara. You might have seen me on other amazing videos on this channel, but if you haven't, I'm Indiana. I'm 20. I'm from Australia. And today you're going to get to know me a little bit. I've always had a super big interest in cars. It's not something that I was super open about or spoke about a lot, but cars and racing has been a huge part of my family since, I mean, before I was even born. My poppy, who is my grandfather, he was the president of the Drag Racing Association in Western Australia, and he raced for quite a long time. He was the first person in my life to teach me how to drive when I was of legal age to be behind a wheel. He has been such an inspiration to me. He's like my best friend in the world. I really remember I was really, really young. My pop had this Ford Mustang Cobra. It was white with the blue stripes on it. He changed the lights out in it to be like blue. And myself, my brother, and my two cousins, Oscar and Charlie, we'd roll all the windows down. The light would be like blue in the car and we'd play Burning Ring of Fire. Just like felt so nostalgic. He has this workshop that he calls Studio D where he restores old vintage cars and I helped him work on one of the engines for a 1952 uh, Holton FX. And then twist it to the front. But it's not twisting. You twist it then. Oh. Yeah, that was hard. <laughs> Oh yeah, we got some competition in the family. My dad is also really involved in F1 and, and goes with his friends and works with Aston Martin. Oh, me and my grandpa are totally going to team up on him because if he ends up going to the Melbourne race with Aston Martin and we go with McLaren, family rivalry is going to be happening. Uh, what kind of came first in my career and like how did I get to the point that I'm at? Oh, gosh, I mean, it's a bit of a wild ride. So clearly I have a bit of a funny accent. I'm Australian. I moved over to the United States when I was 13 or 14 years old. And originally I was very tomboy-esque, if that makes sense. Um, like all I did was track and field, sports was my life. I was really making it a goal to go to the National Sports Institute in Australia. That was like my goal. I came over here to visit my brother. He would booked a movie over here. I was in the waiting room of an audition and the casting director had come out and said, do you act? And I was like, no. And my brother looked at me, death stared me. He was like, get in that room. And then my journey kind of started from there. I auditioned for this show called Attaway Appeal originally. It was from this little channel called Brat TV. It was really a super, super small part. They liked me enough though to write me into a show called Chicken Girls. And then that kind of blew up and it was crazy because I had no idea the power of social media at that time. It was like such a juxtaposition for me, like not knowing anything about this world to just being thrown into the deep end. And within like a couple months, I had over half a million followers and I, I grew and I grew and I grew and my entire life has completely 180 since then. So we're on YouTube, we were amassing like 10 to 15 million views an episode, which was outdoing Nickelodeon and Disney at the time. It really did become like the Nickelodeon and Disney of that generation. Like I had little eight year olds come up to me being like, I love this show. And then like later on, they're like 13, 14 years old being like, I watched that show. And I was like, this is weird to like see this kind of grow up with them. I think we just hit a market at the right time and that's why it worked so well. And then outside of business of it all. We were all just really great friends. My sister in the show was my roommate for two years and still is my best friend to this day. My best friend in the show is my best friend in real life. Like, we just had this connection. So I wasn't prepared at all for what kind of like came my way. I was so just shocked by the sheer number of people that became invested in 
I don't know what I'd eat for lunch or where I was going on the weekend or who I was hanging out with, which definitely came with a lot of like trials and tribulations and like just struggles in general. Like it was really, really hard, but it also came with opportunity that literally no one gets. Because in my head, I'm still this like girl in Australia who's just dreaming of all this. And then now, now it's here and I'm like doing it. It's wild, it's been a wild journey. <laughs> I think what social media has given me is the ability to open so many doors. I think a lot of people used to kind of look down on influencers or people that created content, but it has done nothing but open doors for me personally and like find who I am as a person and my interests and the things that I love to do. I fell in love with acting as a really, really young kid and being on a YouTube series just expanded my knowledge on it, expanded my experience, and expanded my audience to be able to do more serious things. You know, I did a movie with Sean Astin and Mira Sorvino, who's an Oscar winner. Like, I was in a movie with an Oscar winner. Like, that's crazy. If I could spend the next 30 years of my life every single day filming and on set, I would. Like, I genuinely love it that much. I love being amongst like-minded people and people that have such a passion and an interest in everything creative because it's a really, really tough industry to get into. And so if you're around those people that are willing to take that risk, it's so special. I never really spoke about my love for cars because I think I was a little bit scared of if I didn't know everything, they'd think I know nothing. It's nerve wracking to take a step in a male dominated field as a female. But if I've learned anything from my mom, who is one of the most badass women I've ever met in my life, she worked in the mining industry and was like at the time, one of the only females in the field. What I admired so much about her was her ability to still keep her femininity. It's like she'd get up every morning, do her hair and makeup, and go to a mind site. And I loved that about her. And I wanna keep that in this scenario, the sense of like, you know what, yeah, we might be pretty, we might be girls, but we have our knowledge. It'll be really cool to like bring a little bit of femininity into this side of things and trying to create like a safer space or maybe a little bit more of an accepting space for like women to be involved in this is really what I'm trying to do. So yes, I'm probably gonna make some mistakes and do I know everything to do with F1 and eSports? No, no I don't. But am I learning and am I really enjoying learning it? Yeah. Um, my pop has cancer and he was diagnosed when I was three years old and given, I think it was like six to eight weeks to live. Um, and he was diagnosed with stage four cancer and he is now the world's longest survivor of terminal cancer, which is the craziest thing to say out loud. And the journey has been super tough. My grandpa and my grandma are my literal best friends. They are my second set of parents. I update them on anything. If I come home from a party, they're the first people I call to tell them about like what happened or how my day was, or if I cry, like they're the people I call. Um, so yeah, having them go through that has been like super hard to sit back and watch because there, there's nothing that you can do but be there as a supportive family member and tell them it's gonna be okay. So my grandpa is obviously a huge racing fan, a huge car fan. As a kid, we'd grow up watching any and every race possible, but he's never actually had the opportunity to go to an F1 event. Like it'd be like a full circle moment. Like I grew up watching this on TV with him and then I get the opportunity to take him to something that he's always dreamed of going to and experiencing in person. I genuinely think that I have the best grandparents in the world and they are so supportive over everything I do and I miss them every single day. And so I hope that I get to make their dreams come true a little bit one day. Yeah, that would be cool. I think throughout the partnership with myself and McLaren, I really hope to gain a whole new set of knowledge about something that I'm not too knowledgeable about just yet. Honestly, I've made so many new friends along the way already and I've just skimmed the surface of working with them. So I'm really excited to meet new people with like-minded interests. I think what my audience is 
appreciating so much about the partnership already is that I'm showing a completely different side. So I'm not just showing like the classic gamer's perspective or the racer's perspective or somebody that's like got all this knowledge. I feel like they can relate to me being a part of the brand because I am still so new and still like learning and it feels like they're learning with me.